Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. This is part two of the in-depth review of unit two using objects for AP computer science. Now this particular part of the video is going to be talking about the string and the math class, okay? And so this is kind of picking off right where we left off um, from the first video. And um, you know, if you, if you need to re uh, refer to how to um, create an object or how to create a class rather, um, the different parts of an object, um, the difference between static, non-static, void, and returning, all of that is in the previous video. So if you missed any of those things, go back over there and there'll be timestamps in, in a pinned comment there. There will be timestamps in a pinned comment here and also on the side. So it'll be easier for you to kind of skip to specific parts. Okay, great. So now I'm going to be talking about the string and the math class. And now both of these are inside of what is called java.lang. And this is because both of these things are integrated with the Java language. That's why that lang is there. It's, in, it's integral to the Java language, okay? So I have Java, which is the initial package. Um, sorry, Java, the initial package, dot lang, sub package. You won't necessarily have to know this. Uh, I am just telling you right now though, there is a review question on my on the quiz that I made on this, but it's very specific nipping information. You probably won't have to know, but it is a specific bullet point item on the college board's course description for this unit, which kind of talks about all the things you have to know. So I included it here anyway. So now we're going to start with the string class. And these are methods of a string class, which basically means that if I create a string object, I can call these methods on that object and it's going to return something possibly. It gives me information about the actual object itself. So the first method, remember you always use the name of the object, dot operator, the name of the method, and then um, open close parentheses. If you have any inputs, you put those inside of those parentheses, okay? So the first thing is you have the length, okay? you have the length. And the first thing is that the length uh, returns the number of characters in the main string. So for example, if I have, um, you know, AJ, which is my name, A-J-A-Y, then if I were to do that string dot length, open, close parentheses, it's going to return four right? Because it returns the number of characters in the string. Therefore, because there are four characters, it will return for an integer value. Okay. Now we move to the next one, which is dot index of. Okay. Now dot index of, and then you have open close parentheses, but notice you now have a string input. Okay. You have a string, you have a string input. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to return the location. It's going to learn the location of a string in a main string. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say I have again, hello, right? And I were to put in E as my input, it's going to tell me the location of that string E inside of the bigger string, hello. It's going to tell me where that is positioned. That is extremely useful. Um, for many purposes, and we'll be going over that, all right? Now the next one is dot substring. And what substring does is it returns a string in the original string based on a range. Now this is a bit, you know, the wording of this is a little bit interesting. Basically what this does is it, let's say I have a string hello world, right? And I put in a start and an end into my input. What it's gonna do is it's going to Let's say I put the starting at, you know, the start and then my end is four, right? It's going to take from zero to four. It's going to take those first four letters and return that. So it kind of cuts almost the string. It takes what is called a substring, a part of the original string and returns it depending on the range that we put in as an input. So there is a start and then end is actually optional. So if you do not include an end input, it's going to basically assume that you go from the starting points all the way to the end of the actual string, all right? And now the next thing, which is very, um, this one is probably the one that a lot of people get incorrect. It's based, it's called compare to, and it returns the value of a string based on a string comparison, all right? 
This one is a little bit weird and um, we'll talk about it slightly. This one isn't uh, used too much because you can always work around it. For example, in an FRQ, you can generally work around the compare to. You don't have to use compare to only because, you know, it's something that a lot of people um, may may forget or kind of, you know, not really realize the first time. OK, and so. Now I'm going to go into some examples. Actually, before I go into the examples, I want to talk about um, string indexes. What are indexes? Well, they, they are basically the location of letters. So indexes are used to describe location of characters inside of a string. So for example, let me make a fancy string here, right? Using some fancy letters. Look at that, <laughs> some some fancy letters, all right? And now if I want to talk about the position, like right? where is H, where is E, where is L, where is O? What I do is I have these places, right? My indexes. Now logic would assume that, you know, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. However, this is not the case. Indexes always start at zero. They always start at zero. So go zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's key that you remember that they always, always start at zero. Always, okay? When you're talking about string indexes, they start at zero. Now, I may be wondering, why is this important? Well, this is important to think about because let's say I have hello here. The length of this, right? If I do length, the length of this is six because there are six characters. However, the location of that last final character is actually at the fifth index. Even though the length is six, the location's at the fifth index. And that sometimes uh, messes some people up. So it's very important to remember that when you're talking about location of characters, it starts at zero, meaning the first character in a string is at index or position zero. Okay, now let's move into some examples. So here I've created a string using the pretty much unit one stuff, right? Creating a variable. I do the type, the name, assignment operator, value, semicolon. All right, and so I'm saying string my string equals hello. Okay, so let's say now I do my string dot length, right? Which is supposed to return the length of the string. Remember, str uh, the actual length refers to the number of characters. So there are one, two, three, four, five. There are five characters. Therefore, it will return five, okay? Now let's say I have index of E, okay? Now index of, remember, returns the position of my input, of my, of my input in the larger string. So for example, if I do index of E, remember, indexes start at zero. So if I look at this, my index zero, one, two, three, four, it's actually at index one, right? Even though it's the second letter, it's at index one because indexes start at zero. So my index of E equals one. Now what if I have index of A, the position of A inside of my string hello? Well, you notice something. There is no A in hello. So what is it going to return? Well, it's not going to give me an error. It's actually going to give me negative one. So if it's not located, inside of my string, it's going to be negative one. So this is a way that you can see, for example, oh, you know, is there a, is there a Y in this person's name, right? And you, and you do, um, you do index of, if Y is equal to zero, then that means that it is, I mean, sorry, if it's equal to negative one, that means that it's not inside of that string. Now the next thing, substring two, three. So remember my substring, if I go up here, Substring, my inputs are start and end, right? Start position and end position. So here I set two as my start position and three as my end position. Remember, again, when I'm talking about position, that refers to indexes and indexes start at zero. So if I want to go from two to three, I look at position two, which is right here. I look at position two and then I go to three. Now it does not include three, so it is exclusive. It is exclusive on that last item. It only includes, it does include, it's exclusive. So if I want to get this, if I do two to three, it's going to give me just one L, right? It's not going to give me, um, it's not going to give me the, 
second L because it's exclusive. So the first one's inclusive, right? And the second one is exclusive, if you remember this from, uh, from math, all right? When you're talking about domain and range, remember that? That when you have bracket and parentheses, brackets inclusive, parentheses excluded, you may, you may not. That's the same type of, that's the same type of uh, situation here. So my substring is going to return L. And now I have string.compare to by. So basically how compare works, and again, it's really weird. It has stuff to do with ASCII values. And it really, you know, it's, that's actually a concept. I'm going to be doing a separate video completely on compare to at some point, because this is something that requires a little bit more of an in-depth explanation, right? And some of the nuances of it. But basically for now, we're going to look at if, if the first letter, right, is less than or equal to the second letter, right? Uh, yes. If the first letter of this one is greater than or less than this one. And because it is, or it's it's greater than, L, um, H is later in the alphabet, right? That's going to give me that it is, so let's say I'm comparing this to by, so I have B and I have H. I'm comparing this to this. This is going to be five letters, I believe. C, D, E, F, G, H, C, D, E, F, G, H. That actually may be six, unless I'm going crazy. So I have B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's six letters um, over. This is six letters to the right of B. Therefore, compare to is going to give me six here. And I'm going to double check this because, again, compare to is really weird and it does some weird things. This should be six, though. And if it's not, there'll be you know something on the bottom of the screen which will tell you the correct answer there. But basically, you're comparing position of the letter. And actually, a lowercase letter is greater. So like, let's say I do capital Z and then lowercase a. Lowercase a is actually greater than capital Z. It's really weird. And this all has to do with ASCII values, which actually have to do with the binary, which is, again, something that we'll be talking about, again, in a separate video because it doesn't really fit into the actual curriculum um, specified by the College Board. It's, it's something that they want you to know, but it's not listed in the unit, so I'm not going to really go over that um, until a separate video, which I will. I'm not, I'm not going to leave it alone. There will, there will be a video soon on that. All right. Now, the last little thing that I want to talk about with strings, which is unrelated kind of to this, but I didn't get to it in Unit 1, and I just wanted to kind of talk about this because some people may have noticed um, you know, some things weird. Let's say I have a string, my string like this, right? That's a normal string. I have a quotations on both sides. But what if I want to put a quotation inside of my string, right? I want to do my string is, and then I want quotation aj, right? Now, if you notice, this is what's going to happen right? It cuts off this as a string. It has this random text and then it creates a new string here and it all messes up your program. That is because you cannot do a double quotes, right? If you do a double quotes, it thinks that it is ending the string. So how do you get around this? You get, the, you get around this using things called escape characters. And escape characters are done with a backslash. So if I do backslash and then um, quotes, this allows me to actually put a quote in my string. If I do backslash n, this allows me to put a new line in my string. And if I do slash t, this allows me to put a tab in my string. And if I do backslash backslash, I get to put a backslash. Now this is weird because backslash is a the escape character. I need two backslashes together to actually put a backslash. So now if I wanted to do this, what I do is I say my string is backslash like this backslash and that will work that then counts because this is the escape character it then counts this as something that i can actually use in my string same here so these two here um this quote and this quote open and close the string and then these are actually quotes um, and it's saved as a character inside of my string. That's just something I wanted to get to just because some people may have been wondering about that, that, hey, you know, how do I put, you know, how do I put quotes in my actual string, right? 
Now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is the math class right here. And now there's a difference between the math class and the string class. Methods inside of the math class are static, meaning I do not have to create an, a math object to use them, right? For example, down here, when I did, um, you know, when I did my string, I created an object first, then I had to use the methods off of the object. In this case, I don't actually have to do that. If you look here, I can simply call math and then dot the actual method. It's static because I can do it that way. I don't have to create an object to actually use the method, all right? So I'm gonna talk about the first one, dot abs. Now you may, be, you, you may already have an idea about some of these. ABS returns the absolute, absolute value of the input number, meaning if I put a number here, like a negative eight, it's gonna return eight, right? Because it's finding the absolute value or the distance from zero, always positive. Now the next one is POW. Maybe wondering what this is, right? What POW does is it returns num1 to the raised to the power of num2. So for example, if I do dot pow, you know, two, four, it's gonna do two to the power of four, and that's going to give me the answer. All right, pretty cool. Now the next one, SQRT, you may be wondering, you may already know what this one is, right? Just based on kind of some of the other ones. What SQRT does is it returns the square root, right, of the input number. So for example, if my input number was 16, right? It's going to give me four because 16, or the square root of 16 is four. And now the last one, dot random. Dot random returns a random number between zero and one, and it does it as a double, okay? It returns it as a double. So this could be like negative, I mean, this could be 0 0.19826542, whatever. Right? Anything between zero and one, it can do as a random number. It's kind of a random number generator. Now let's move into the examples. So the first one is, actually I already did this one for you. So math.abs, I simply do the absolute value of 8.2, of negative 8.2, and that's going to be 8.2. Now the next one, math.pwr23. This is going to do two to the third power, right? Because remember up here, Power is basically um, you do um, num1 raised to num2. So that's going to give me that. Then square root of 9. Square root of 9 gets me what? 3, right? And then random. Again, it's going to give you some random number like 0.9082567 dot dot dot. It's going to give me some random number just like that. All right, and that is it. That is all the information that you'll need to know for the uh, string and the math class. All right, again, all of the, all of the, this PDF will be in the, or the notes will be in the description below and everything will be um, provided, including the practice test, which I will be going over in the next video. If you, like, uh, if you liked it, please like and subscribe for more content. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in uh, part two. Three, I agree. I definitely recommend doing this practice test because it'll definitely help you and it is very useful. All right, thanks for watching.